Have you ever found yourself in a state of loss, feeling like opportunities have slipped through your fingers, opportunities that might have significantly influenced your life? Perhaps you think of relationships that could have brought immense value to you. I understand this feeling personally. I have been in this position and prayed earnestly, Lord, I have lost so much this year. Can you please restore what I have lost? Friends, let me tell you, we serve a God of restoration. In the Bible, a demon-possessed man encountered Jesus Christ. This man, who was tormented by a legion of demons, found deliverance through the Lord. Mark 5:15 narrates the story, Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion, sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. This man, who lived among tombs and was tormented day and night, met Jesus and was made whole again. He was set free. Another testament to God's restorative power is found in Mark 5 41 semicolon 42. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita, Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years old. And they were overcome with great amazement. In this instance, Jesus restored life to a young child. What I want to convey is that you need to believe and have faith in Jesus Christ's ability to restore. If you are praying for God to turn things around in your life, for favor to come your way, for goodness and mercy to follow you, or for new opportunities to emerge, I encourage you to immerse yourself in God's word. Joel 2 25 semicolon 26 says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Hold on to 1 Peter 5:10. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Now, join me in prayer, King Jesus, you are sovereign, wise, merciful, gracious, loving, and kind. We thank you for all these attributes today. Humbly yet boldly, we approach your throne. Lord, I ask you to have mercy on me and help me to trust you fully. Help me let go of logic and reasoning and simply have faith in you. Your word says in Isaiah 55 8 semicolon 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Father, we trust in you because your ways are higher and wiser than ours. You see the future, the present, and the past. You are all-knowing and all-seeing, and your wisdom has no limits. We honor you. Forgive us for times when we questioned your plans for our lives. Forgive us when we doubted whether things would work out for our good, in our limited understanding. Teach us, Lord Jesus, how to silence doubt, reasoning, and logic. Teach us to fully trust your word so we can mute the whispers of confusion, disbelief, and distrust. Help us understand that your ways are not like ours. You don't conform to our standards. You don't operate as humans do because you are the Almighty, the King of Kings, and the Everlasting Father. May the Holy Spirit bring understanding into our hearts, helping us see that we serve a God who chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and the weak things to shame the strong. Though we may not always understand your plans, we know that you are a mighty, faithful, and loving God. When things appear to be falling apart, we trust that you are causing everything to fall into place. You are capable of turning what was meant for evil into good for us. We hold on to the promise in Jeremiah 17 7 semicolon 8, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Our trust is not in our abilities or money. We do not rely on our own strength. We trust in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our future is in your hands, Lord. Our lives are in your hands. We look to you. May your plan for our lives be fulfilled. May your plan be placed above our own ambitions. You have our complete commitment. Have your way, Lord. Thank you for hearing this prayer. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And remember, the promises of God, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. My people shall never be put to shame. May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after we have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle us. And always remember, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
Blessed indeed is the one who trusts in the Lord and places confidence in Him. Like a tree by the water, we will not fear heat, for our leaves remain green. We will not be anxious in drought, for we will continue to bear fruit.